What do Lady Gaga, RuPaul, and customer loyalty have in common? Jackie Huba, that's who. Jackie is an author and keynote speaker in the customer loyalty space. I caught up with her at the High Five Conference where she was the opening keynote speaker. Her positioning is very unique. Think drag queen and creative, and I know it will help spark your magnetic marketing mojo. Hi there, Meredith Oliver here with another episode of Magnetic Marketing for Voices of Experience. Today I'm joined by Jackie Huba. Jackie may be new to some of you out there at the National Speakers Association, but she is an amazing keynote speaker and author. She primarily focuses on customer loyalty. Mm -hmm. And here I am at the High Five Conference, ran into her, and she agreed to do an interview for VOE, so that is really amazing. So Jackie, we're gonna talk about magnetic marketing, and how do you go about marketing yourself as a speaker? How do you recommend that speakers get out there and get their message out so they can get hired, get booked, and get paid? Yeah, so if I've been doing this for about 16 years, right? And so I am an author, I have four books, and I kind of learned after going through my two first books, I th and a book is a great, great vehicle, first of all, because it allows you to kind of get out your ideas, it allows people to really understand what you're all about and what you believe in, and then they want to see it live, right? right? They want to see what's going on. And I've learned a long time ago as a speaker, which all of your audience already knows, part of it is the content, and the other part is can you be entertaining, can you be interesting, can you be engaging on, yeah. on a stage? Right. Um, but for the content to be compelling, I learned after my first two books, which I, to me, honestly, they were just very much like other marketing books and customer loyalty with my case studies and my great ideas. Um, and we got great feedback to it. But after a while, you start to realize I'm going to blend into the crowd if I'm coming out with stuff that is average or if is similar to a lot of other folks. I mean, there's a lot of speakers out there. So for you to stand out is very tough. Yeah. Um, so for my third book, um, Again, my specialty is customer loyalty, and I just became obsessed with Lady Gaga and looking at how she built this super passionate fan base and the seven strategies of how she was going to do this for the long term and how she was just kicking butt doing it and what businesses could learn. So now I've got this great talk, Lady Gaga, I'm telling stories no one has ever heard. Yes. I can use audio, I can use visual, I have um, props such as her perfume that I use um, and I go into the crowd with it and, and spray it on people. I've seen you do it. It's amazing. And it just, because I've chose a topic that is just magnetic, if you will, it yes. attracts people. And if you don't love Lady Gaga, you're fascinated by like, how, Absolutely. what is she doing? Um, and so that's a talk worth talking about. Yes. And so the word of mouth coming off that talk yes. of just the idea and how it happened and, and, and the concepts, but also it's just a really interesting subject. That has led to a lot of talks on that. So that yeah. Monster Loyalty talk is amazing based off the book. And I just kept going. So <laughs> you, can not, you, can, you can probably imagine there's not a big uh, long connection between Lady Gaga and Drag Queen. So my next book is called Fiercely You, Be Fabulous and Confident by Thinking Like a Drag Queen. Yeah. And I, at first I was like, oh, this is a really odd topic to write about. Um, from a business standpoint or a self-help standpoint, studying drag queens. Right. But um, fascinating. I think but people are fascinated no by But no one this. else is doing it. Right. And that's really, so it's a matter, it sounds like to me, you developed content, but you developed a hook around that content to make it the magnetic, to make it right. interesting and different. Right. There's so many more stories. And even in my talks, I'm weaving in business examples. Absolutely. Even with drag queens. Yeah. So when I was watching your keynote this morning, I saw you talking about uh, Yeti coolers. And it was a fabulous business case study. Mm -hmm. Even though you were talking about being fiercely you mm -hmm. and using drag queen examples, it mm -hmm. all came together brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Thank you. And um, But I think pushing the limit. Uh, the talk I did this morning was about how to be a bold brand. So yes. I think about like how to apply that to myself yes. as well. Yes. And how can I push the limits? And one thing I didn't do today, the last time I gave this talk, I did it in drag. Oh, wow. That's yes. bold. I came out. <laughs> I was in Vegas. So I thought I could take some license. Um, and it was 600 marketers at a marketing conference. Um, yeah. And I decided to just come out as if I was a drag queen in the wrong room. Wow. And I was lip syncing and I'm doing my whole thing and oh I'm, up, I'm up on stage um, just l like I'm pretending I'm at a drag show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when they introduced me, uh, they had said that Jackie was running late 
but she has sent someone to start the talk without her, and she'll be right here. Oh, that's please fantastic. Welcome, please welcome Lady Trinity, which is my drag persona. Right. Right. And so full on hair, makeup, sequin cat suit. Um, and as, after I was up there, I was like, yo, DJ, you, DJ, stop the music. I must be in the wrong place. And I went through this whole thing like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. Bye, Felicia, ran off. Uh huh. And then came back out. I had to stay in drag because you can't de drag. No, right? Not that fast. Right. But I explained <laughs> to everyone that I was there to help them know how to build their own bull brand persona. And here I'm introducing you to my bull brand persona. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. And it was very scary. I didn't know mixing yes. that much drag with that kind of an audience. But it was right before happy hour. So thank right? God. I know. But they loved it. Right. It was different. It was different. It was different. And it allowed me to use more theatrical stuff Yeah. Um, with the makeup and just bust out the back of the room, you know, doing this thing. It was surprising. Yeah. A lot of word of mouth from that. Yeah. And so I think it's pushing boundaries because that was scary to do. I'd never done before. Uh, I guess so. Um, late, my drag character had never spoken before. She, right. She, she lip syncs. She doesn't talk. Right. So I had to do that. Um, but... I think that's what we as speakers have to do, is learn how to pick up new techniques to engage our crowd yes, um, and be more experiential. And because my subject matter was drag queens, I thought, well, I could do this. I can do this. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like to me, you have a really strong alignment between what you're advising your audience to do in your talks and what you're willing to do for yourself. And so you found that somehow to be able to yeah. demonstrate to mm -hmm. your audience. Mm -hmm. I'm advising you to be bold. I'm advising you to be share worthy. Mm -hmm. And here I go. Yeah, and I was. And that's what you did. Yeah, I was very vulnerable with this audience because I said, you know, look, like I'm gonna. I realize I'm at a marketing conference, and I am yeah. dressed as a drag queen. Right. Like I'm telling you to take risks in your right. marketing. This is one of the riskier things I would do for my marketing. Yeah. Because um, I don't know what my audience is like, and I just hope that they're going to think that it's fun and think that it's yeah. exciting. But you just never know. So. You know, um, as a digital marketer who ends up, you know, at breakouts, teaching people all the tactics of all of that, I do have to admit, though, that for speakers, our best marketing is a great talk. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. That has these ideas woven in mm -hmm. where it is unique, it is different, and you mm -hmm. push boundaries, and mm -hmm. you give it a new twist or a new spin. Mm -hmm. That really is our best magnetic mm -hmm. marketing. And also, I think, though, bringing as much of you as you can. Yeah. And I have to say, um, I've had a couple of different speaking coaches over the year, and my over the years, my last one... Uh, was amazing and what she helped me do is realize like I need to take those things that make me me yes and push them through yes into the talk yes um, and I love music and I love dance and I love colors and I love all of that yeah but for a long time as a speaker I felt I needed to be more buttoned up because uh -huh. I thought that's what I was expected me too and um, over the years I've come to realize no, no. showcase this weirdness showcase this craziness because it's fun and it's engaging. So I hope everybody out there listening, if you're uh, checking out our VOE episode this time, I just am so thankful that Jackie took a few minutes to get with us. I know she might be new to a lot of you out there. So Jackie, tell us your website, your Twitter handle, NSA Nation, you need to be following this woman. She is one of the hottest keynoters in marketing, sales, customer experience, and loyalty. And you need to get to know her. So oh, tell us thanks. how to contact you. Thanks. It's all Jackie Huba. JackieHuba.com, Jackie Huba on Twitter, Jackie Huba on Instagram, Facebook, all of that. So yeah. you Google Jackie Huba, you will see it all. You will find it all. And let me tell you, as nice off the platform as on the platform, um, I appreciate you oh. stopping by to talk to me. Thank you for having me, Meredith. You're welcome. It. Thank you.